you so much for being a part of our videos. This is uh, our last video to do on this Wednesday. Been sitting down here at Frickin' Frack with Rudy. We do them all in one day. And, uh, the biggest gift of these videos is getting busy with you, Rudy. Honestly, and, it really is. Right. I mean, too. Right. Uh, one of our one of our viewers has said, "Hey, can we come and be a part of this?" And the answer is yes. If you'll let me know, we'll we'll brew a little bit more coffee, and you can be a part, and you can watch in, and uh, we might even have you join us. Uh, Sounds good. So, at any rate, thanks for that. We're on, we're in Isaiah chapter sixty three. There's a great prayer here. We're gonna look at it and just talk about it. Uh, verse fifteen: Look down from heaven and see from your holy and glorious habitation. For your zeal and your might, excuse me, where are your zeal and your might? The yearning of your heart and your compassion, they're withheld from me. For you are our father, though Abraham doesn't know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us, you, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer, from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways, harden our hearts so that we don't fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, the sake of your tribes that are your heritage. Your holy people took possession for a little while, but now our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have long been like those whom you do not rule, like those who are not called by your name. We go into chapter 64 for a second. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. We'll stop there, I can read more. Rudy, why don't you respond to that? That's, a, that's an interesting prayer. The, the prayer is, is correct. I mean, basically we're asking God to come down from his holy habitation and to save us in this existence. And as, as he, chapter 64, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil to make your name known to our adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came, you came down, the mountain quaked at your presence. Mm -hmm. And that actually is reminding Israel and us of the Ten Commandments. Right, right. So we're asking God to do something similar mm -hmm. to what he did foundationally for us to come to understand that he is the creator of the universe, mm -hmm. which was the giving of the constitution of the kingdom. Correct, correct. So the earlier verses uh, are verses of despair. They are verses of an oppressed people who are suffering. Uh, I'm, I'm still reminded of, and you'll have to pronounce his name better for me, Elie Wiesel, we, uh, a Jewish historian who studied so much about the Holocaust, E-L-I-W-I-S-E. -I -E. Okay, I, I can't pronounce the name. But they, they were hanging a group of... Uh, His last name was Herzl. Herzl, all right. They were hanging a group of uh, prisoners in a concentration camp to make an example of them. Had everybody out in the uh, out in the court, court watching, and uh, most everybody they just immediately broke their neck and died. But there was a child being hung, who uh, obviously wasn't heavy enough for the child's neck to die. And so you can imagine the horrific scene of this little child strangling to death and their feet flopping and their arms flaying. And in the crowd, people started saying, where's God, where's God, where's God? And uh, the author, someone said, where's God? He's right there with that little child. Amen. And so in the middle of our pain, we can cry out and say, where's God? Where's God? I don't care what sort of pain you're in, where's God? Well, where's God? Well, God is right there in the middle. And as we are in our pain, we can say, oh God, won't you come down? And won't you be in our midst? Won't you be with us? Won't you show us 
that power that you showed them the day that you gave the Ten Commandments. And Rudy, you remind me and actually taught me that the day that the Ten Commandments were given was exactly the day of Pentecost. Correct. You know, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, that's the reason, you know, you, why were all the Jews, why were all those people in Jerusalem? And it was because it's one of the pilgrimage holidays. You were commanded to come to Jerusalem 50 days after uh, the anniversary of the crossing of the Red Sea, which was the day after the Sabbath. That, so there were, the, the regulations were that there would be seven full weeks plus one day. Right. And that's why Christianity calls it Pentecost, because right. Penta means 50. Right. And 50 relates back to the the amount of years that are in a jubilee, and of which the jubilee is ultimately the uh, enshrinement in the festivals to that talks about the favorable year of the Lord. Right. And what happens during that particular time frame is, is that you get back what was lost. Yeah. And ultimately, what we've lost is right. the, the, our relationship with the Lord as Adam had it in the garden. Yeah. How, how good is it? So the big picture is in the midst of our pain and difficulty, we ask God, oh God, come down. Well, it's like the, where were your foot, where, where are the footprints in the sand? Right. Well, that's because he was carrying you. Right. There aren't any. That's exactly right. So we're going to stop with that. Thank you so much for being a part of our study. Really thank you for uh, being this gift to the people who listen to Gift to Me and so many others. And God bless you. We will see you all tomorrow.